Okay, now we're coming to the last presentation for today. I'm happy to see that there are still so many people. And um, yeah, Emmanuel Bello from Kent to Camp is now going to talk about uh, DevOps processes to the rescue when building, maintaining, and continuously improving SDI isn't enough. Good afternoon. Thank you for being there so late. I try to give my talk so that we finish on time uh, today. It's a challenge to present uh, DevOps uh, processes if in 20 minutes, even in a larger project like the one I'm going to present. But uh, let's try. So first, in a few, in a few words, the agenda. I am not going to present Camp to Camp. The Camp to Camp presentation is in the slide. So you, you can have uh, access to the material. Then I, I'll summarize in a few words the project. There are two more talks. Uh, tomorrow uh, on the topic, yeah. and so I recommend you to go for the over, overall overview of, the, of, the, of, what, of what we have done to these talks, and then we'll dig into the DevOps aspects of the project. So, um, so I, I said I will skip camp to camp. We are an open source company, nearly 100 uh, employees in uh, France, Germany, and Switzerland. Um, we, are, we participate to open source uh, um, project and propose different solutions, WebJS, SDI, Odoo, 3D with Cesium, QGIS, and also tailored project based on open layers, for example. We are also contributors to open layers. And all these solutions, they can be deployed on Docker with Puppet to automate the deployment of the solution on orchestrating systems, and this is the last uh, this last aspect that we uh, used in the Fiber to Home Factory project. So um, I'm going to straight jump into the, the, the project we have done uh, with Deutsche Telekom. Torsten Dre, the, the session chair, is the project, product owner, project manager uh, at Deutsche Telekom for this project. And we have developed this solution uh, with other companies uh, like uh, Terrestris, Mondialis, uh, and other, you will see the, the slide. The goal of this project uh, is to be able, uh, uh, in a very short time, to plan the routes of the fiber network when you plan to uh, wire a new, a new city. So you need to collect data, you need to automate the processing of this data, and then compute the routes, and then propose a um, possible scenario uh, that are least cost effective that are interesting from the cost point of view um, for the planning. And so, to do, to do so, many uh, processes need to be chained together in a special data infrastructure. So there are multiple com uh, components. They will be presented more in detail in the uh, following uh, talks. But just for you to know, the challenge of this, talk, of this project is to, to bring all these components in a short time in, in, uh, in a platform. And this is one of the challenge. The second challenge is to work as a team. So there are many companies involved in the project. Each company has its own way to work, uh, to develop, to deploy uh, their software. And we have to work together on one SDI and so this is one of the challenges. We have also different uh, competencies, and so we have to work together and bring all components from these different companies in the same place. And so this is the this slide uh, and, uh, explaining the different components. So, so there are many, many technologies uh, from different open source stacks that needs to be bring together, brought together behind the security proxy, so it has to be unified in a co coherent platform. So if you think at this, uh, so many components, so many processes, so, and such a large team or a diverse team, it's not just about develop, build, ship, and run like a Docker message. You have to be much more uh, structured and much many more processes uh, should be taken into account to reach this goal. So actually it looks more like the DevOps life cycle. You have to plan, define what needs to be done, plan the work of the whole team, then you have to work together to create the solution. You have to 
propose a testing mechanism to, have, to be sure that your components work with other components, that the quality is there, then to package all these different components to be able to release them on a system, on a central system that will be then configured by infrastructure engineer that will be monitored and the loops go on with the next, let's say, next sprint, next release of the solution. One of the key aspects of this project is that at the start, we didn't have the, uh, the, the infrastructure we would get at the end of the project. The target infrastructure was not, uh, was not there yet. So we also had to build not only the software part, but also the infrastructure below to run the software. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, sequentially speak about how we, we solved, how we worked together on each of these aspects of the DevOps life cycle. So first, uh, we have to work together to plan what will be in the next release. We use Scrum as a, in, as a method, and there we brought everyone together for, to define what will be the, the outcome of a sprint. And when I say everyone together, I mean the product owner that decides what will be implemented, the Scrum Master to organize, GIS consultant, but also developers, and also the operation, the infrastructure team, because it has impacts uh, what you develop, so it, it will be needed to be uh, hosted, and a new hosting paradigm will impact the software. So <coughs> everyone has to work together uh, in defining what will be what will be done. We use therefore tools like the Atlassian Suite uh, conference in Jira. And um, so, uh, my message here w is really that it's not a project manager that will define by it's himself the work packages. It's a teamwork. And as an example, the first uh, task of the project has been to propose a Git repository so that we can receive the source code developed by the, the different teams. So in infrastructure aspect came very early uh, uh, in the site of the project. So this looks like this, a uh, complete uh, Jira dashboard with uh, multiple cards, multiple person involved comments, definition of done, how do, do we agree on, on the fact that this is implemented, yes or no, and so on. But uh, the important part is, it's not on, only about the tool here, it's the people's mind, and a broad and diverse spectrum of people should, should be involved. Then, uh, we created, we, during sprints, uh, so two weeks, uh, work together on, this, on the code, we created the software that has been selected for the, the first or the second uh, for the sprint. And this has been done with remote teams. We were uh, uh, in different uh, regions in Europe. And so we used also tools to communicate, to share on a daily basis our status, to ask ourselves questions within the teams, and also uh, to share information. So we also organized workshops and so on. And here, one of the key aspects of having a smooth project is also the product owner being hyper available to respond to questions so that the team can progress on a daily basis without losing time. So here an example of a code sprint uh, with everyone together and here on the right a Slack image of communication happening on a daily basis uh, within the team. Once uh, the software is developed, uh, then we need some quality insurance. And uh, in such a large system, we need to automate the quality insurance. So uh, we had, uh, with uh, GitLab, uh, a continuous integration pipeline that would run test on each commit or on each time we start the test. We had in unit test and also integration test, and as well end-to-end -end test. So I log in into the user interface, I do a request, and what's the, re the, the, the result. One of the aspects uh, uh, and the, the challenge here is that as a DevOps project, the dev development team and operation team needed to work together to bring their software in the CI pipeline because uh, we need to have a common way to test the solution. We had tools, GitLab, for this, uh, and we had to write uh, the same way the, t the test and the way to and bring every component in this pipeline. And this has been 
this is, I think, uh, a solid foundation then for the project over the month as the, 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 uh, the scope grows. And so we proposed, uh, Git, the GitLab proposed a, a, CI, a status page, and you can see here for every branch, uh, for any, uh, the status of the, if, if the test passes or not, so that uh, it's a known in information, the quality of the, of the software. Once the, the, the software has been developed, tested, it needs, to, it needs to be packaged, to be deployed on at least a development integration inter, uh, server so that people can also then decide to go in production. So the packaging aspect uh, has been done with Docker and, op and OpenShift Helm charts. We use OpenShift in the, in the project. So every component has been put, has been put in a Docker container we had Docker images that were generated automatically by the, the, the CI package, uh, the, the, con the continuous integration, as well as Helm charts that would define how these Docker containers are linked together once deployed on development or integration, for example. And um, this looks like this. We have uh, at Deutsche Telekom the Magenta Trusted Repository, where the CI uploads every image there are also there, there are security scans for the images there. And you see that within each uh, uh, repository, you will find the image for every branch or every tag of the, of the solution. So we really have there the whole uh, library of all images that has been produced during uh, the project. And then that are also available to be put in the, uh, on the staging uh, infrastructure. So once uh, the images are ready to be deployed, uh, we have to bring the solution in production. And this doesn't happen per manual uh, clicks, and then, uh, but it, it, it works like the pipeline is extended until, until production. And there we have uh, set up a very uh, advanced uh, and high-level uh, delivery pipeline with different Git repositories uh, to hold the, com the source code, but also the configuration version of the different environments. So we had a Git uh, environment for development platform, one for the in integration platform, and one for production. And, there, and, and this way, we can have a, uh, an automated and still validated manual validated process in uh, bringing the source code to production. So just an ex as an example, um, once you do a commit on the source code, so this is the uh, top left uh, chart, and when you do a commit there, it will open a pull, re a pull request on the development environment with the, the, commit, the last commit version so that the uh, developer can say, okay, now I want to, I merge this commit and I update the version of my development environment. And so we can sync any commit in master on the development environment just by merging a pull request. So upgraded the version of the development environment. And once uh, some tests uh, have been done there and, make, and we are happy with the solution, we can tag uh, in the source code a version, and a tag in the source, co uh, in the source code will generate uh, a pull request in the integration version to be actually, so to actualize, to update the integration version with the latest target version from the project. So you bring here a feature that has been more tested and that is frozen to a cert certain point. And there, in the integration version, it's then also possible to once some test has been run smoothly and we decide to bring something in production, also to do a pull request, a new version from integration, a pull request to production, and there we can also then uh, say, okay, let's deploy this specific version on production. And you see that only the source code is validated, uh, there is only one source code with commits, tags, and then we bring tags to integration, 
and then a specific tag validated in integration can be brought to production. So we have a real pipeline without uh, having people uh, messing around uh, the source code or the, the, the items. One of the, the aspects of this DevOps life cycle is that when you bring an item into production, you also need to have the right, the adequate resources there, uh, um, uh, as compute resources or storage resources. And here we use the infrastructure as code aspect. And so we define, in, we use the cloud system and with Terraform, we pro, uh, provisioned uh, in, op, in the OpenStack API, the machine, for example, we say, I would like and describe the machine types we would like, send the order to OpenStack API and created the machine. So the, the, the source code to create the machine is documented in Terraform. And then this Terraform receipt starts Ansible to bootstrap the compute nodes and then pipette with install also metrics, security, or other, other aspects. So not only the application source code is versioned, but also the infrastructure aspect are versioned. Versionized. So uh, this is here an example uh, where we describe that we would like uh, an X large uh, machine to be provisioned, installed with this uh, operating system and uh, having below, okay, uh, the log volumes will be assigned to, uh, to this device and it will be this file system type. And so you have a, the whole project lifecycle base, is based on a software development paradigm. Of course, uh, once you are in production or ready to be in production, monitoring plays a big role because you need to know if you have adequate resources, if everything is running smoothly. And here for the project, we develop, we install two, two things, install and configure two things, metrics with Prometheus and logs with Kibana. So we, we know exactly how many CPU is used on each compute node, how, how many, um, what's the memory consumption and so on as well as we have for the application part, uh, the logs, so the HTTP logs that are analy analyzed in Kibana, and we here are able to follow requests, errors, time of re uh, response time, and so on. And this dashboard allows uh, also to monitor the whole platform to, to make sure everything runs smoothly, and if there is something to adapt, uh, this information goes in the next uh, sprint or next life cycle of the, of the project. So this is really something that uh, it's a co-creation between the development team, operation team, and we have this different loop uh, that I explained, plan, create, verify, package, release, configure, and monitor, that repeats themselves over, over the month of the creation, of the duration of the project. Um, we could say, okay, this is very complicated. Is it really needed. When I, I look back at what we have done in the project, we started in, uh, in fall 2017. And at the time, we hadn't the, the, the targeted infrastructure. We had, we had, it was all the beginning of the project, we had to start. And we start with, with what was available, the modules that were available, the technology, the, what we thought was a good idea to start with, and we start. And so, for example, you can, we can see that we migrated this spatial data structure. It started on AWS, was the web services, then, uh, then the open telecom cloud, and then in the uh, telecom internal cloud. So we had three migration over uh, this year and a half. This is only possible if you have recipes to, to deploy the infrastructure and the source code. Other way, having such a large team, so many components, and to be able to install them three times, it's a huge, uh, it, it will just not be possible. And this is just an example, because we also, at the time uh, involved, uh, we migrated the orchestration system from Rancher to OpenShift. Because OpenShift wasn't, we, we had to start with something and then we changed. Uh, and, and then uh, we first said, okay, we installed a development infrastructure, then integration, and then production, but then 
Okay, dev int on the new platform and so on. We had a CI CD the test they were built with Jenkins, but then GitLab uh, uh, was more interesting for the team, more performant for what we wanted. So we changed to GitLab the CI aspects. And as the time progressed, we changed also, we updated the software stack versions. We integrated new data. We added features on, on, in the project. And so you see that the, the, these, these DevOps processes, the, this paradigm, they allow to have a continuous working software over the time. And uh, I think this, this allowed the team also to create and to add new features all over the time without having to focus too much, too, too much on reinstalling everything on a new environment. So this is, these are our conclusion uh, infra, it scales. We started uh, at some place, and we are now at the place we would like to be with the feature we want. And uh, you, it's a good, it's a good idea and to start with infrastructure as code and to de deploy uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. Uh, if you plan to build a large system, maybe for a small system it's uh, uh, heavy, uh, too heavy too heavy, but uh, if you plan a, a large system, it's a very valuable thing. And it's also, if you work with multiple teams, uh, a common language for the team and how we're gonna develop, how we're gonna deploy, and so on. So it brings, it's, it brings the teams together. One of the takeaways I, I, I do have in this project is that open source software is modular and interoperable. We could bring uh, uh, Grasse, Actinia, Georgestra, Shogun <coughs> together. Uh, it supports versatile deployment because we deployed in so many <coughs> environments uh, and it can be updated, upgraded uh, during a short time. And, and also uh, we used uh, the agile, uh, an agile method for the project, Scrum and then later SAFE uh, uh, and it empowers the team Everyone participate to the definition of what will be, be done. It Im improves also mutual knowledge and trust. And I think it's very important because as the system grows, it is more structured but also more complex. And if the teams know, uh, know and the teams, every me team member know, knows each other better, knows the subject better, the product owners know better the technique, and the technique knows better what the, are the goals of the project, we can keep up the speed of the delivery and the velocity of the project. And so, for me, one of the, 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 the last takeaways is that such method, uh, it allows from b building blocks to build a cathedral with very different, uh, by integrating a team of very different uh, person and we can bring all this together and bring something solid, build something solid uh, over the month. So. If you would like to, to know more, uh, there are two talks mm -hmm. tomorrow uh, on this topic. One of the processing aspects mm -hmm. with grass, uh, and one from Toston that will summarize the whole aspect of the project. Okay, there was a first question over here. How many people were involved in the project? I mean, for example, developers, product owners, so on. Maybe I can answer by myself. Um, it's hard to tell, actually, because not all developers are working full-time uh, on the project. Um, the, as you saw, there are so many different companies involved, and not all people from the companies are, are there all the time. So in total, I would say for the geo part, I mean, the, to the project itself is much larger, but for the geo information part, we are just counting numbers, something between 30 to 40. But uh, I would say the core team, or if you calculate uh, full-time equivalents, it's maybe 10 to 14 people. Yeah. In the process description, you say that there was a single scrum with single PO and so on. Is it actually so, or were there multiple teams, or how did it actually work? I, I think uh, we have a scrum method, and we adapt over the time. 
At, at, at first, we had one single Scrum process, and then as it grow, the system grow, grew, then we have multiple Scrums in parallel. Yeah, up to three. Hi, so uh, I actually want to um, uh, catch on that uh, last question. So you said that you had multiple Scrum teams. Um, how, how, how did they work essentially? So you have multiple stacks of things that, uh, that your product need to, needs to, to touch on. So for instance, you start maybe from hardware, go up the, the, the chain up to, um, I don't know, if you take a product like web, uh, you go development and then uh, web platform and stuff like this. So you have the, the, the horizontal slices and then uh, you have essentially product teams that cut uh, vertically through this, uh, this stack that you have. So uh, how, how did you guys organize it and how, how, how was it managed? <coughs> Yeah, as Emmanuel just said, it, it changed over time. So in the beginning, we just had one large team, and we were also learning to work in a scrum mode. And uh, yeah, we rather soon realized that the team is too big and that we have to do something. So now we have uh, three teams, and it's more or less divided by topics. So we have one team um, um, dealing with all the DevOps part and infrastructure as code part. Then we have one team uh, which is mainly uh, working on the data part because we also have to import and, and even buy a lot of data and organize the data and getting uh, data models right and so on. And another team uh, working on the application part. So everything what is needed for yeah, geoprocessing, processing the data and also for building the web applications for the user interfaces. So we have different teams, but also everyone is able to ping someone else to ask questions and to, to get forward in his uh, task. All right, then I'm gonna ask a second question. I'm cheating a bit here. So um, I really love what you did with the whole process and the presentation, and I think it can apply to any type of uh, software development. Uh, and was there anything specific to spatial data infrastructure that um, made made it different or was it posed a challenge or stuff like this? I think one of the aspects is the, la the amount of data we do have when we collect large data sets, but it's also not specific to geospatial. I think the whole concept could be applied to any other use case where you need a lot of hardware and a lot of developments. Um, uh, it doesn't make it special when we're, because we're dealing with the geospatial information now. Yeah. Any more questions? No. So maybe just one, one more note. I mean, yeah, you already see there are two more talks. And if you're capable of German, there's also one presentation available via YouTube from a colleague of mine, from Tobias Frechen, who is dealing uh, more with the CI, CD parts, technically, which was held uh, on the German conference, the Foskis, uh, this year. So, but it's in German. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you.